Welcome back to Gospel Fuel. We are diving into the second half of John chapter 4. Maybe we'll get into a little bit of John chapter 5. We will see. Last time we were talking about the woman by the well in Samaria and Jesus having the conversation with her, revealing himself to be the living water who, if you drink of him, you will never thirst again. And now here we are in John chapter 4, verse 46. Uh, this is YouTube, so please like, subscribe, and share these videos. I know there are many people who would appreciate some gospel fuel in their lives. So if you are encouraged by these, just, hey, whether it's word of mouth, just tell somebody about the channel. Uh, just tell them that they'll be encouraged. would love for you to spread the word. All right, John chapter 4, verse 46. Uh, let's start back in verse 44. So this is right after he departs from Galilee. He chilled. Um, or sorry, he departed for Galilee. He was chilling in Samaria uh, with, with the Samaritans for two days. Many believed in him because of his word. And it says, after two days, he departed from Galilee. It says, for Jesus himself had testified that a prophet has no honor in his own hometown. So when he came to Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, having seen all that he had done in Jerusalem at the feast, for they too had gone to the feast. So he came again to Canada. Uh, Canada. <laughs> Jesus was not in Canada. Jesus came to Cana in Galilee where he had made water into wine. So again, this is where um, Jesus did his first miracle, turning water into wine. Uh, and at Capernaum, there was an official whose son was ill. And when the man had heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So Jesus said, Unless you see signs and wonders, will you not believe? The official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son will live. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him, and he went on his way. As he was going down to his servants, or as he was going down, his servants met him and told him that his son was recovering. So he asked them the hour that he, that he began to get better. And they said to him, well, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever just left him. The father knew that that was the hour that Jesus had said to him, your son will live. And he himself believed in all of his household. This was now the second sign that Jesus did when he had come from Judea to Galilee. So you got this really cool story of you know, this man who, so he comes to, he comes to Cana, Cana and uh, in Galilee where he had made the water into wine and there was an official whose son was ill. So we don't know if, you know, obviously what we do know is um, word spread about uh, what Jesus did um, turning water into wine. That, uh, that somehow, you know, again, we know in the story that Jesus doesn't, you know, announce himself as the one who turned the water into wine. But, you know, obviously the servants who were, you know, dipping, dipping the, the, the wine vessels into the, into the uh, jars of, of that were, you know, those big massive jars for Jewish purification, they would have told the story, be like, hey, you know, Mary's son, Jesus did this. It was, it was crazy. And so word about him went, went around. And so when he comes back in to Cana, he sees that uh, there's a man, he, and immediately this man thinks, hey, Jesus is here. Jesus can help me. I love it. You know, the water into wine situation, miracle, but not a healing. But still, like, a, obviously showing that Jesus has, you know, control and Jesus has authority over the natural order of things. Because you don't just take, you don't just take water and you turn it into wine. Uh, you know, for those of you who are wine makers, and if you want good wine, you know, good wine takes time to make. So Jesus literally, and you know, Jesus in, uh, in, in the miracle of turning the water into wine, the, the, the guy says, you know, this is the best wine. You, you have, you've left the best one. So chances are the best wine would have been the oldest wine, that vintage wine, that good wine. The best wine would be the oldest wine that has had that time to sit and ferment and just become winey goodness. I'm not a big wine drinker myself, so I don't know a whole lot about it, but I know good wine takes time. And Jesus, Jesus was able to create something old. He was able to create something vintage just out of water. And so he has control of, over the material universe. He has control over matter. He, and, and so this guy makes the leap and he says, you know what? If Jesus can turn water into wine, he can heal my son. 
and he wanted him to, to, to come down and heal his son for he was at the point of death. So we're, we're not talking like, oh, I just, you know, I just got the common cold or what's going on. No, th- this son was sick. He was on his deathbed. And the father was kind of, you know, grasping at straws. I'm sure he had, he had tried, you know, natural means, natural remedies for, 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 for curing his son. We don't really know. Um, but he comes to Jesus. And it's interesting that, you know, Jesus says, well, unless you see signs and wonders, will you not believe? This guy is showing belief. This guy is saying, hey, this guy is saying, Jesus, I believe you can heal my son. He's actually showing belief. But he, he's, he's wanting to dig a little deeper. I think he's wanting to dig a little deeper into the faith of this individual. Just to see, do you really believe me? Or do you believe just because you, you know, tasted the wine? Or just because you heard about that miracle? So you need another sign in order to believe? But no, this, this guy believed. He says, the official said to him, sir, come down before my child dies. He knew this. He, he had his hope. He had his hope in Jesus. And Jesus says, go and your son will live. And so the guy goes on his way and, and he, he, his, this, the servants come to him. He figures out it was around that same time. And he knew, man, that was the exact moment that Jesus said, your son will live. You know, because, and this, I love this miracle because this is not a showy miracle. This is not a, let me lay hands on you. And all of a sudden, boom, you arise. And Jesus had those, and not that they were showy per se, but Jesus had those miracles that were like more visually linked to him performing them. But this one, he just says, you know, somebody could have chalked this up to, oh, it was just, you know, it was just coincidence that, that, that at around the same hour, Jesus said, your son will live is when the fever left him. You know, it was probably some of those natural remedies that we gave him worked. But no, the father knew, the father knew that it was Jesus. And, and it, then it says, and he, and he himself believed and all his household. So he didn't keep that. He didn't keep that to himself. He didn't keep the goodness of the gospel. He didn't keep the goodness and the compassion and the grace and the love of Jesus to himself. He spread that to his entire household. You know, this, the, this child, this son who was ill, never met Jesus. Maybe he, maybe he was able to, you know, come across Jesus later in, in, in Jesus' you know, ministry. Who knows? But all this, this, but this son, he would have heard. He would have heard about Jesus. He would have said, you know, the only reason you're alive today is because this man, Jesus, and, and the, whole, or the whole household believed. Man, it would have been crazy. We really don't know how old the son is. It could be young, could be older, but this is going to be a story that this young man is going to hear you know, again and again. He's going to be reminded. He's going to hear that name of Jesus again and again because not only did the, son, not only did the father believe, but his whole household believed. We'll keep going on in, in John 5. It said, And after there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and now, uh, now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool in Aramaic called um, Bethesda. So the pool of Bethesda, which has five roof colonnades, and in these lay a multitude of invalids, people who are blind or people invalid is the better term. It's not invalid, sorry, invalid. <laughs> just sounds a little harsh. <laughs> um, invalids, blind people, lame people, paralyzed people. And the one man was there who had been, who had been an invalid for, for 38 years. Now, I'm 38 years old right now. It's kind of crazy. It just sort of hit me. I'm 38. For, so for my entire lifetime, uh, he was... He, he was an invalid for 38 years. And when Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, Jesus said to him, do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, yeah, sir. I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am going, another steps down before me and jesus said to him well get up get up take up your bed and walk and at once the man was healed and he took up his bed and he walked 
And it says, now the day was a Sabbath. So the Jew said to the man who had been healed, well, it's the Sabbath. It's not lawful for you to take up your bed. Oh, Lord, help these people. And you know what? The truth of the matter is, if I would have been alive then, I probably would have been one of these people. I mean, not that I'm Jewish, so I wouldn't have been, but, but I would have probably believed along these lines. It's a Sabbath. It's not lawful for you to take up your bed. But he answered them. And he said, well, the man who healed me, that man said to me, take up your bed and walk. You know, so these are these guys were sticklers of the Sabbath. You shouldn't even be carrying something large like a bed. And it would have been like a bedroll. We're not talking like a big, huge wooden bed that this guy's carrying on his back. Like, it's not like he's got bunk beds on his back and he's walking his, his, his king size, you know, uh, <laughs> gel top you know, mattress. No, no, this would have been a bedroll. This would have been a bedroll. He says, the man who said, the man who healed me said to me, take up your bed and walk. And they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was. Man, I love that. He didn't even know who it was. For Jesus had withdrawn and there was a crowd in place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see, you are well. Sin no more that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had healed him. This is, uh, and this was why the Jews were persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, my father is working until now and I am working. No Sabbath for Jesus right now. That's what he's saying. And this is why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him. This is John 5, 18. And this is why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him. Because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. Now, that's a big deal. You don't go doing that. You don't go making yourself equal with God. But I mean, we know. We know Jesus was. Jesus is the Son of God and God the Son. And Jesus goes on and he says, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. Whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing and greater works than these will he show him so that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He who does not, and and he who does does. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming and is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. Who's the dead? We are. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out, and those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the res resurrection of judgment. And he goes on talking about that he does nothing on his own. See, and I, I love I, I, I love these stories. First you have first you have the official son who's healed. Again, Jesus just speaks the word and says, you know, relax, your, your son will live. And it turns out the same hour Jesus said that is when the fever broke and the fever left him. So he believed. Again, a miracle removed from Jesus. And here we have the healing at the pool of Bethesda. And this guy didn't even know it was Jesus who healed him. He couldn't even say because it was a crowded place. There's lots of people around. And Jesus is kind of in, just stops. He says, hey. He looks at this man and I, and 
I love this because so often it's like, well, people had faith in Jesus and, and, and then, you know, they, it's because of their faith that, that Jesus healed them. Well, he, this is a story where Jesus, Jesus actually seeks out, he seeks out the individual to heal them. It wasn't that this man came crying to Jesus saying, please, Messiah, son of a living God, heal me because you are able. No. He didn't exhibit really any sort of faith. This is just the grace of Christ on display, healing those who are broken. He knew he had been there a long time and he said to him, do you want to be healed? Obviously he did because he was there. He's got his bedroll. His bed's there. He's chilling. And he answered, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up and when I'm going another steps in before me. And Jesus said, he doesn't even, he doesn't even really answer him. He doesn't really answer him, yes, I want to be healed. He explains why he can't be healed. Jesus says, do you want to be healed? He explains why he can't. Well, here's the issue is the water. Uh, I got no one to put me in the pool. I can't put myself in the pool. So, you know, maybe he's kind of crawling his way. And each time someone jumps in there before him and he misses out. He says, sir, I have no one to put me in the pool and the water stirred up. And while I'm going, another steps down before me. Do you want to be healed? Here's why I can't be healed. Hey, Jesus heals him. Get up, take up your bed and walk. And at once, at once, at once, immediately the man was healed. And he took up his bed and he walked. And as soon as the guy stands up, he says, take up your bed and walk. This guy stands up. This guy probably turns around. He's like, oh my gosh, thank you. He turns around. And again, we don't know. We don't, we don't know exactly what, but we know he turns around. He picks, up his, he picks up his bed and Jesus is gone in the crowd. He doesn't even know it was Jesus. He doesn't even ask you, sir, what's your name? Please tell me your name. He didn't even have time. Jesus kind of, Jesus kind of, he healed this man. He says, arise, take your bed and walk. And Jesus withdraws into the, into the crowd and he's gone. And it was Sabbath day. So the guys are upset. Hey, why are you carrying your bed? You shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be carrying your bed. And he says, well, the man who healed me told me, take up your bed. I mean, I just did what I was told. Maybe this guy wasn't even aware it was a Sabbath. He's probably been there. He's been there for a while. You may have lose track of the day. Maybe he knew exactly it was a Sabbath and he was just doing what Jesus told him to do because that's the guy who just healed him. So he's going to obey. He's going to obey that voice. And they said, well, the man said, who? now the man who had been healed did not know who it was for Jesus had withdrawn and there was a crowd in, in the place. And I, 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 you know, I, I know I would be guilty. You know, I, I'd want to be a Sabbath keeper. And, but man, this, we're, we're talking about this guy's life is entirely changed. This, this guy experiences, this guy experiences the healing power of Jesus in such a real and tangible way where he was lame. And now he rises up, he's got up, he's taken up his bed and he's walking. And this guy's got to be over the moon about this. Well, after this whole ordeal, Jesus finds him again, finds him in the temple and said to him, see, you're well, like, which, which maybe Jesus is a rise, take every better walk and kind of got bumped away. Like we don't like it. This suggests that Jesus didn't even get to see like the manifestation of this miracle. It, it was just like so in passing. He's like, well, hey, poof, he's getting bumped. You know, hey, do, do you want to be healed? Uh, you know, I, 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 I. I can't be healed because, you know, this is what I, every time I go in the water, someone gets in there before me. Hey, arise, arise, take, take up your bed and walk. And then Jesus is gone. And now Jesus comes back and the miracles confirmed. Hey, see, he said, see, you are well, sin no more that nothing worse may happen to you. And the man went away and he told the Jews that it was Jesus. He's like, he, I, I got to go back and tell these guys who it was. It was like, I got him Jesus. I met him. He was, I got him Jesus. And they're like, oh, of course it was. But Jesus answered, they, this is why the Jews were, were persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. You don't do things on the Sabbath. Any things that you would do on the Sabbath, don't do those things. Even if it means healing somebody, don't do it. Stop, don't. But Jesus answered, my father is working until now and I am working. And then he goes on to say, I, I, I'm not doing anything except that my father's telling me to do. Why was the Sabbath given to man so man would rest? Jesus is rest incarnate. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary 
and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Not just a rest for your physical bodies because you've been working hard for six days, but a rest for your souls, a rest from the hard work of trying to earn God's approval through your obedience to the law because you can't do it. And God knows you can't do it, and he gave you the law to show you that you can't do it, and he gave you the law to know that you needed a Savior, and that Savior is me. Jesus is above the Sabbath. Jesus is the one who created, who, who gave the Sabbath to man. So he's able to supersede the Sabbath. That's what Jesus, and he's not going to, he's not letting the laws, which don't do things on the Sabbath, to put it very plainly, he's not letting the laws stop him from changing the lives. That's why he's here. Again, Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law. And in fulfilling the law, he sets us free. And that's exactly what this man experienced. Again, I love the, I love the Christ that we serve. I love the Messiah that, that, that we call Savior and Lord. Because he was not like me. Man, I would have been wanting to, you know, say the magic words in front of all kinds of people. And so everybody would know who I am, but not Jesus. Not Jesus. The humility and the genuine love, the genuine love for that he had for people is just astounding. Is astounding. And that's the genuine love that he has for you and for me. He's not waiting for us to cry out to him. Man, he's coming to us. He's seeking us. He knows we've been where we are for a long time. And he is coming to change everything for you and for me. He's coming to heal us and set us free. That's what Jesus came to do. That's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thanks for listening.